Hi, this is Stacy Chalemi from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have John Hernandez here today, and he is a health and business coach. He works with helping people in their daily lives to rise above the chaos and overcome problems in their life, and he also works with people in the business area and overcoming obstacles in that area as well. So today I'm going to introduce John. He's going to tell us a little about himself, what he does, and he has some great uh, tools and techniques and strategies to share with us today that can help resonate within your own life and help you grow as a person. So John, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Sure. Uh, name is John Hernandez, as you probably gathered by now. Mm -hmm. um, I am a, uh, a life and business coach, as well as a business owner. I'm a CEO of a multi-million dollar company. And now at this point in my life, it's really about giving back, mentoring the next generation, those that are coming after me. And and what can I, what can I, what, what kind of wisdom can I share from my experience uh, to help those move past what might be in their way or even something that they might not be aware of is in their way. Right. So that's where I'm at right now. So in my business life, I've had uh, epic successes and biblical level failures. Uh, so I, I've, I've run the whole gamut of that. Um, and in my coaching life, I've been mentoring for many, many years. And I use um, a very old school modality called alchemy. And a lot of folks think, okay, alchemy, that's isn't that the thing that turns lead into gold? Well, <laughs> kind of. But basically, it's, a, it's an ancient science that I've been uh, trained in and certified in uh, by one of the only that I'm aware of truly legitimate alchemy study schools. And, and I put it into a contemporary way to, to help those adjust their internal landscape so that they, so that you can create the life that you want. And doing that, I use some of the very old techniques. A lot of imagery is used. Active imagination is the key to alchemy. So there's a couple of different things that I do that might be somewhat unique. And uh, and we have fun. Don't forget fun. That has to be a part of all this. So I've been studying this for many, 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 many years. Actually, since I was a little kid, I started in ancient history. My mother used to teach me, used to read me uh, Greek and and uh Egyptian mythology and Arabian mythologies mm -hmm. instead of the standard children's book. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was hooked. And from then on till now, um, I've been studying that world and working in that world and applying it to contemporary. And how do I use it in my life? How do I get everyday practical tools? So that's, that's where I'm at right now. That's amazing. I, I love how your mother read to you about Greek mythology and Egyptian mythology. And she kind of put you open and brought in your mind to this whole new realm. And, um, you know, people, you know, I think, and even in their, in their daily and their modernized life, we have to realize that we have to go out of the gray box. We have to think outside. And, you know, sometimes we live in an environment where everything is so labelized and stigmatized and we're used to doing things according to the environment that we live in. But sometimes it's good to open our minds up to new things. That's why I love coaching and I love when people, you know, help others because it really, you know, makes people get outside that gray box and really start to see things from a whole different light. Now, maybe you can go and expand a little bit about your coaching techniques, because I really like how your coaching techniques are not like everyone else's. It's a little bit different, but it's very effective. Yes, absolutely. And, and by the way, you know, I use coaches and there's a ton of great coaches out there. Yes. And, and each one of us are unique. And, and my belief is that each one of us can complement each other. Yeah. So I'm not really in competition with other coaches like my method is is the best. My right. method, my method, and if it calls to to the individual that's working with me, then then it's organic and then it really works. Right. So, so the first thing I like to say is, uh, alchemy is really about balancing. It's about moving from one thing to another thing. It's called transmutation in alchemy. 
Uh, transmutation is a permanent change. There's transformation, which we hear a lot about. Yeah. But I can transform, but there might be a possibility that I might move move back. Transmutation is a permanent form of transformation. And so what happens in these in these pieces is first, you know, we get a chance to chat and find out what's going on. You know, is there anything in the way? Maybe there's nothing. Maybe everything is great, but something is calling and there might be some different way. So by using these ancient modalities, and I, I keyed on it a little bit differently. Uh, so we're using imagery. In alchemy, imagery is all over the place. There's hundreds and hundreds of alchemical images, and they're all very arcane. And I was like, what the heck is that bizarre dragon or that lion with two heads and <laughs> all these kinds of interesting things. But they they all, basically what images do is you've heard the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words. Right. Image Imagery goes right into the subconscious. And by doing that, it can affect a change in the mindset and behavior immediately. Right. Much more so than my words. If I do a, if I, you know, talk a lot or give a lecture on, you might remember 20% of what I said, you might be right. motivated, maybe, hopefully. Um, <laughs> but but without the imagery as a constant reminder, then it's really difficult. So if you think about, okay, there's a piece of music and you hear it right away, you're back in that moment. Yeah. And it's eliciting this feeling in your body. Imagery does the same thing. So we work a lot with imagery because it becomes a second language. Mm -hmm. And it gives a tool set that you can use in your car when you open the door and you're walking into that meeting. And what do I need? It's a major negotiation, a multi-million dollar deal. I'm using the business analogy now. Uh -huh. right? What do I do? But what if it is, what if it's a personal piece? What if it's, you know, I, I just don't feel like exercising today or I don't want to do this. Well, how can that imagery all of a sudden bring the emotional charge for you to move forward and move through? Right. That? So that that's a brief piece on, on imagery. Why do you think imagery has such a, um, a stronger effect than, than verbalization? Because, uh, you know, I agree with you. Like when you go into a lecture, you know, if you connect with the, with the uh, professor, even if you, you know, or you go into a, a conference, if you connect with the person who's speaking, you, you will remember a good portion that resonated with you, but a lot of it you'll forget. But a mm -hmm. lot of times, you know, certain colors, certain images will strike you and they'll stay with you for a very long time because they, there's something in your mind or in your body that, that has made that connection either to the, to your past, you know, to something that's going on in the present, but it, it, there's something that imagery does that verbalization doesn't. Can you kind of expand on that? Yes. So, um, so I use music as an analogy. Let's use art now. So mm -hmm. um, if I were, if I were to, to say, I don't know, let's say something popular, like, well, I'm assuming uh, Van Gogh's Starry Night. Right away, it elicits a, a, a certain emotion, and that emotion could be different in each person, depending on where they were in their life when they saw it, how they resonated. But there might be some specific piece of art uh, that really creates a sense of calm or peace or or um, joy. That's a word we don't use much, but that's a big yeah. one. Um, it is. Uh, you know how how does that how does that work? And then as as the person who who's had that experience looks at that piece of art it's eliciting that emotion right away much more so than if i say you know here why don't you feel this or 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 here's an example of yeah of this. this goes way deep into the subconscious and in the subconscious is the fertile ocean that basically is the seed of all creation and that means creating a different behavior, a different mindset, a different way of being, all, all those kinds of things. And that's really critical in order to move to the next step, because just as powerful as those images are to elicit that, yeah, there's also things that occurred in your past that 
elicit other emotions that may not be as wanted as that one. Right. Because that part of the brain doesn't have a temporal memory. It has no sense of time. Right. So we have to use these these images in order to move move past these other strong behavior tendencies that were created long ago. Wow, that's pretty powerful. It seems like a, like when you use this type of um, coaching mechanisms, it, it seems like it really it helps with the repressed emotions. And when you get those rep repressed emotions out, that's when the healing process can begin. And mm -hmm. what are some of the types of ways that you help someone when you're going through the healing process? I know everybody's different. So, you know, the process will be different for, for different people. But when a person, you know, starts to feel those, those repressed emotions starting to, they're starting to, they're starting to come out and they're starting to actually feel what they've been repressed for so long. And they're starting, they're going through that rough patch where you're all that pain is starting to release from their body, which is good. But it, it is a hard time to get over that hump. But once you get over that hump, it's great. But what are some of the processes of, of healing once you've connected to those repressed emotions? Excellent question. Yes. So, um, so first, finding the source of those emotions is critical. Without doing that work, um, it's really, I'm going to say, difficult, if not impossible, to move through it. Yeah. So finding the source, mining and going deep to find that source. So Peter Gabriel has a great line uh, called digging in the dirt, mm -hmm. digging in the dirt to find the places where you got hurt. That's a right. very easy metaphor. Like that. Yeah. In alchemy, there's a whole set. There's a whole imagery set that has that formula that basically says, go inside, rectify what you find there, and you'll discover the hidden meaning of, of the stone, the philosopher's stone, or your own internal essence. So it's about mining where that is. And now once you find it, now we get to work with it. We get to put it through these processes. Mm -hmm. And I use an alchemical modality for that, where we go through those processes. And yes, it's not all light and 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 wonderness. That that will come, yeah. but you have to go into the dark first. You have to work in that uncomfortable place. So the modalities will bring that out. Uh, through a series of questions, um, through a series of uh, workings that we'll do. And then I also use, and I alluded to this in the beginning, uh, uh, imagery or an active imagination. Mm -hmm. So active imagination is another key piece in not only in alchemy, but in everything. Right. Basically, all these things around us, all this technology and everything uh, was done from someone's imagination. Right. Which is different from daydreaming and fantasy and all that. This is about really engaging that part of ourselves that knows. Yeah. And using that. So what I do is I work with the uh, with the client to really sharpen that active imagination skill set by me bringing them through certain uh I don't know what I call it, fields or some yeah. things to, to really see what's going on. And then they they in turn that with the imagery those two things together uh gives them and myself because i use this stuff all the time right real world tools so that it, it's not just some arcane philosophy it's something that can be applied anywhere right. and any time it doesn't and it doesn't have to be a long set of workings it can be something done in in a matter of minutes wow that's amazing now, you said this also could help people in the business world. How do you apply this therapy and coaching mechanism to people that are in the business world trying to overcome certain issues? Is this, What type of things is this good for when you're working with somebody in, in the business world? Another good question. <laughs> so they're both related like this. Yeah. Uh, one is not, it's the same side of the coin, two sides of the same coin. So, right. so um, it's, it's very related. And here's here's why. Because in the business world, guess what? We still have ourselves to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, we have a certain set of logistics and a certain set of formula or whatever we're trying to accomplish in the right. business world. But then we have us. Yeah. So it's about a skill set of moving us to those mechanisms. So I can again I spoke about this briefly earlier. 
uh, there might be a, uh, someone on, on your staff or you have another coach that's that's really an expert on putting business systems together or training modules or you name it, whatever it is. But there's there's the point between myself and where that begins. And that's the point where all these things come to play. Right, right. So that's that's where that's where we have fun. And by the way, alchemy is also called the magnum opus, the great work. Oh yeah. Because it's it's this is the good news and the bad news. Uh the 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 good news is that you know you'll get something. The bad news is you'll get something. And <laughs> it's the same thing. And it's the great work because it's ongoing all the time. Right. It doesn't mean you're you know, you're bringing me on for five-year contracts or anything like that. It might be very quick. You might be able to do it in six sessions, 12 right. sessions. I, I don't know. It, it's different for each person. Yeah. But the skills and the work continue for your entire life. Right. Because it, guess what? It never goes away. Those core pieces we talked about are core wounds. Yeah. And sometimes we call shadow. Uh, or dragons in alchemy, those are always there. You can't kill them off. I know right. that's popular belief that you could somehow kill the ego. Or you can't do it. Right. But what you can do is you can bring it around into the light and you can see it and then you can work with it. Right. I, but it's I, always there. <laughs> I kind of feel like, you know, those scars and, and the trauma you went through in life, whatever, whatever the case may be, for whatever reason, um, they always stay with you. It's just you. It seems like you learn how to cope with it. You know, it's it's uh, kind of like scar tissue damage. The scar tissue damage will always be there, but you know, you could learn different ways of 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 getting through getting through it, so it doesn't interfere with your life. You know, um, you know, it, 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 scar tissue probably is not a good example, but it, you know, what I'm trying to say is that we go through obstacles and we go through triumph in our life and we go through things in our life, but you know, the pain from those experiences will always resonate somewhere in our heart or in our body, but we learn how to cope with it. So it's not, it, it seems like it doesn't affect us. And it seems like this type of therapy can help you. So it, it like you said, you don't really get rid of it because it's, it's a part of you. It's a memory. Right. It's a history. Mm -hmm. It's, you right. know, it, it's, it, but it, there's ways to cope with it. It seems like, so you can move forward. And not only cope with it, but what if there is a way to alchemize it, transmute it and use its energy into something positive? Because most yes. of those behaviors, <clears throat> excuse me, that we brought on, we brought on as protection mechanisms, survival mechanisms. Right. And all of a sudden it doesn't work so well. Yes. Later in life. However, there's still gold in that lead. Let's go back to that. Yes. And what if I can bring that out and consciously use yes. that skill set. So now, now, you know, the first step is recognizing it, working with it, you know, managing it. And the second step is actually befriending it and using it as a positive force of change yes. for myself and others. And we all we all have them and we all have lots of them. Right. You know, I'm I'm 65 now and I continue to find new ones. Right. And now I just have to be amused. You know, I'm not going to go into shame saying, you know, I should have dealt with that 12 years ago or 20 years. No, it it appeared when it was ready, and now I have the skill set to do the work. Right. To do the difficult work sometimes. I feel like so, sometimes the best healing process is when you do take those those things that happen to you and you turn it around and you take the positivity from those from that negativity and you turn it into something where you can actually help others and and that feeling of achievement that feeling of of helping others and or doing something good with it can see can be an and also another attribute to, to the healing process correct absolutely because all of a sudden there's there's a, a bit of a burden that's lifted. And yeah. the more burdens that are lifted, the more freedom each of us have. And the more freedom each of us have, the more open to creation we have. I don't mean that in an esoteric way. Yeah. You can't imagine it to create something to 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 bring into your life, whatever right. that might be. So it it's all connected, really. Wow. Yeah, I think that. 
That's amazing. I, I love, I love how this, this method works because, you know, most of the time people, you know, they, they, they talk to others or they just, they don't use other different, you know, some do, but I think when you use, you know, when you're using imagery or when you're using other, other techniques, it can be so powerful, especially with different personalities, because some mm -hmm. people resonate so much better when, when it comes to images or colors and, you know, just like some people might resonate to sound better, but it seems like, you know, a lot of people tend to resonate with imagery really well. And, uh, I've seen a lot of success in, in that area. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And. And even for folks that that are um, have visual challenges, remember we do the active imagination. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I have to physically see something. Right. I can bring that piece in to their imagination. And in fact, those folks, a lot of times their imagination is much highly developed, much higher developed than 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 not. So right. they're already ready to, to go. So it's not a matter of, you know, those of us that, that have, that can see, those of us that have visual impairments can have an amazing experience with this as well. How so, can someone get started with this? How, you know, what's the process? Like, um, does, does a person have to get to a certain level in their life? Or it could be any little thing that they're struggling with that they could use this type of therapy to help improve their life? Um, you know, this this is a, a skill set that can be used. I have I have some that I work with that that I have worked with in the past that were 18, very young. Um, I even work with some folks, their, their nieces and nephews are, you know, they not ongoing, but they want me to, to talk to them for a moment, just kind of introduce them to some of these things. So mm -hmm. there really is no age. It really is a matter of, you know, is this something that resonates with you? Right. And not, the good news is it's not going to be just, I don't want to scare anybody. Away. It's, it's not going to be like a long involved lecture course on alchemy. Yeah, I mean, you could do that if you want. You mm. know, do that, but that's not what this is about. It's using those modalities. There'll be some contextual work with it, but it's not about you know diving deep or having a background in 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 history or a background in anything. These these are methods to kind of live in the human condition, right? They're, they're, whether you know, there's alchemy is is very alive in the Eastern traditions. In fact, a lot of people know it there as yoga or uh, qigong or tai chi or, or some of the other types of uh, labels that are basically alchemy work in western we call it alchemy but they're all these are all things that live in our collective unconscious right basically our our original dna so it's not something new that i'm in developing it's something that's very very old um, but the human mind is the human mind. And so it it tends to work. And it's been working for thousands of years now. Yeah. So how do you feel about um incorporating maybe meditation every day in your in your daily lifestyle? Is that something that's very beneficial for people? That's an excellent question, too. <laughs> um, so what is meditation? Um, this is one thing that I years ago I studied uh Qigong with with one of the original masters that that actually worked with Bruce Lee's from the Bay Area here where I live. Oh wow! Um, and uh, amazing man, very difficult to understand his English. Um, but I remember one day I was really struggling with meditation. Right. And and I at that point I was really good at shaming myself, mm -hmm. saying, "Oh, I just don't have what it takes. I'm not the right." person for this you know or it's all bs uh, you know whatever it is so so i asked him one day i said you know why am i having so much trouble with this particular type of chinese meditation yeah I said in this very broken english it's not for everybody right but what i found out many years after that is it's not for every body mm -hmm. meaning that some of us um are more prone to the Eastern ways of what, what I called, you know, standard mindfulness meditation, right. um, 
like a good friend of mine's a Zen priest, you know, he can sit for hours at four in the morning and, and, and be in complete silence and complete. My, my crazy mind doesn't do that. Right. So what I found in the alchemy work for my crazy Western mind, is <laughs> that there's a lot of things to do in the alchemical imagery, uh, yeah. imagination and meditation. So there are places to go, things to see. There might be some things like um, uh, in, enhancing the senses, mm -hmm. smells from incense, um, sound from, I'm pointing, you can't see it, prayer yeah. board, whatever, or drums. Right. Um, or, or any of that, um, colors, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. And, and none of those really hold any power under themselves. But they tell the subconscious mind that something different is about to happen. Yeah. And it puts me into that mode. So you see this a lot in in the Western world, in, in liturgical services, more the traditional ones. Right. You know, the priests will wear the robes. They'll have the incense. They'll have something they're saying in Latin. We, we don't see much of this anymore, but yeah. you know, I'm aging myself. But there's there's there, it's creating a space. Right. And so for me, my my mind starts to then block out the external world. So where am I going with all this? Meditation could look like something very different to everyone. So yes, working in that meditative world, it could mean taking a walk out in nature yeah. and just really noticing and being where you are. Right. That's a beautiful meditation right there. Yes. So, so yes, something that puts your mind in a place that's different from the logistics and stresses of everyday world. Absolutely important. Critical, I think. Oh, I, I agree 100% with you. I, I, you know, I used to, when it's funny when you were saying about meditation, how sometimes it was hard for you, you know, when I would go to a meditation class, I wouldn't start to feel relaxed until the end of the class. And, you know, everyone else was in this, this, this meditation mode where they were completely relaxed. But for me, it was hard. But then I started to incorporate sound bowls in my own home and I started to do meditation plus the sound bowls and start to incorporate the sound. And for some reason, the different vibrations, the different tones, you know, with the slow breathing and with my eyes closed, gave me a sense of relaxation, a sense of it put me in a totally different zone just mm -hmm. by incorporating a few different things. So it's, you know you could have different ways of doing things but for every person, you know, just the littlest change or littlest tweak could have such a huge impact depending on the personality of the person, it seems. Absolutely. And, and so, so what I call the long form, what we just talked about is, is the long form, but what if I need it? Okay. I'm walking, let me go back to business. Now we walk, I'm walking from my office to the, to the huddle room, the conference room. Yeah. What do I do in that two minute or one minute space? Well, so I teach the tool set and how to go into that space that quickly. Yeah. Because time is a mystery, I like to say. Uh -huh. So I go into that space, take a little bit of something that you need, get what you need, move in. Right. So it's there's not it's not either or, it's a both and. So there are a lot of times when the long form, sometimes the short form. So uh, I hope to impart those tool sets. So again, to me, all this is really critical to be able to be used in everyday life. Without it, it's, it becomes with philosophy, which is great, but how do I work with this? How do I use it in everyday life? So it's about making these pieces really accessible. And again, that's where imagery comes in and a few other things. Right. I, I like I like that because you could have a long term a long a long term effect where you you do the long form of it and then you have the short term where you're going to be walking into an office you're not feeling a hundred percent but you do a couple of certain um certain things and it gets you to that point where you're able to cope on a on a positive on a positive note where you can accomplish what you need to accomplish it seems mm -hmm. exactly exactly I love that. I love that. And and does this does this take a long time to understand? It could, say, or is, is does this therapy they could someone could learn very quickly? It's not very hard to to absorb. Right. So another good question. Um, first of all, I want to make make it clear I'm not a therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, I work 
and you know opening to possibilities through right. modalities that in a nutshell at one alchemy was everything at one point yes the old priests of egypt you know they did everything they were healers they were healers for for psycho mental they were healers for physical healers for spiritual uh they were astronomers you know they were mathematicians they were scribes they were a lot <laughs> of different things so alchemy kind of had this whole ball of wax so to speak and it wasn't wow. until really more recently in the last few hundred years that it got split off into the multiple sciences chemistry biology physics um modern psychology from carl jung was a direct uh break off point from alchemy yeah the alchemical library in the world at the time um so there were so all these things got split up so basically this is about bringing it all together so it's not really therapy uh, but it can affect a change in behavior and mindset right and so um so what what was the, the your question i got sidetracked myself no, that you actually answered. Can I explain it? Okay. Yeah, you did. Because I, I was saying if there's a long-term effect or if there's a short-term, you know, how could it Oh, that's effect? right. How long does it take to develop that? Yes. Mm -hmm. was, okay, thank you. Um, back on track. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I always, you know, I always speak to, to folks when they start with me and ask them if they've done work like this. Some, some, many have, others have not. So it depends on how prone they are it's doing this work some take to it rather quickly and others yeah. not again time is a mystery there is no right amount of time or wrong amount of time they'll know when it's starting to really resonate with them it can happen actually quite quickly and then it could happen ongoing you know some folks work with me for a set period of time mm -hmm. uh, however long that is and then they might take a break then come back to me eight months later and say, you know, I'm working on this new set of things. I need a tune up or I, I'd like to do this now, or yeah. maybe, I, maybe they want to learn how to do these things. Right. And then I'll, I'll train them on how to do these things. Maybe they want to train uh, some of their staff or they want to do some of these in one of their meetings or something. Right. So, so it all, it, there's such a wide possibility of all this. So it's, it's really, really hard to say. It depends on, on the individual really. Wow. And it seems like this could help with people even struggling with different conditions because 70% of the causes of, of conditions are related to stress. And it seems like when you're going through obstacles, when you're going through conditions, you know, it brings up a lot of emotions, maybe stress, anxiety, anger, and a lot of different other things. So it seems like that, that this type of, of, um, of, of learning how to, I say the word therapy, but it's not therapy. It's, it's, it's a more of a, what was well, how did you you reserved it a certain way how did you say it you were it's not well it's a it's a change in in mindset it's change a, in it's mindset. a change in mindset and behavior is really so it could have actually help that also it could actually because you're changing your mindset so that could really apply to anything in life so really mm -hmm. it could help and any part any obstacle and anything that you're enduring in life you know this type of of um way of resetting and retraining the mind can actually help you go through anything in life that's right and and, and alchemists are taught to to work and we, we we touched on this on all three levels what they call all three levels of our existence yeah so there's a physical body which is what you're talking about mm -hmm. where you know we have to keep that temple in order Right. And there's the psycho emotional body. Mm -hmm. We have to tune that up because that's where stress lives. Yes. Then, then, and, and that's also where behavior change starts and and, right. and, and continues. Then there's the spiritual body. Well, what yes. the heck is that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's really being open to possibilities. Yeah. But it's how do I how do I tune my internal antenna to be open to those uh, possibilities? when they come yeah and some people call them downloads or intimations or whatever they might be but how do i recognize it how am i open to that right. how do i differentiate that from fantasy or daydreaming and then and then what do i do when i get them how do i put them into practice right because alchemy is about intention attention right yet i get something there's my intention 
Uh, but unlike some popular shows that were out many years ago that called The Secret, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> where you get part of the formula, but not the whole thing. It's like, well, I can put a poster of a of a of a trip I want to take on the wall, but without the attention part of alchemy, nothing's going to happen. Right. I put all the posters up I want. <laughs> I got to do something about it. I got to actually do the work. Again, we get back to it's called the great work. So yeah. it's not an easy fix. It's not like here's the formula. Off you go. You're done. <laughs> always the work is always ongoing. Right. But if you're brave and courageous and willing to do the work, I promise you that there will be great rewards. You'll be able to uncover the gold yeah. that lies within all of us and then bring it out into the light. So, Oh, a hundred percent. And you know, the, the mind, body, and soul is all connected as one. So you really, it's, it's a constant, just like you take care, you have to take care of yourself. It's, it's, it's part of you. You it's, it's a, it's a lifestyle. Like you mentioned, well, you're a lifestyle coach, but this is a, a lifestyle change. This is something you, in order to, you have to incorporate in your life. And in order to feel good, it has to become a part of you. It's not just a temporary thing. It, you make it a part of your life and it'll, you'll continue to progress positively. It seems. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we talk a lot about this in the sessions, there'll be times when you feel like you're taking multiple steps back. Yeah. Those are the times when it's even more important to stay with the work. Yes. There's an imagery that I use that shows a path that sometimes is going up. Sometimes it's flat. Sometimes it's going down. Yeah. It's always ascending. Right. But if you stop when it's down or give up, then you'll stay there in that spot. But if you 100%. keep going, you might go down a little bit, but you'll come back up. Wow. So it's, you know, again, it's not all, you know, it's not all, um, I don't even know what the word I want to use. It's not all, uh, it's not, it's not an easy life and love and, yeah. you know, fantasy all the time. There's, there's definitely dark nights of the soul involved in all this. Oh, a hundred percent. And I always say, why do these lessons have to be so hard? Why do these life lessons can't, can't, can it just be shown to me and then I just deal with it? No, it has to be hard. Yeah. And, uh, but now there's tool sets to work when that happens in the life. Right. There's a, there's a way to move through that abyss, what I call so. Right. If you had to give like three takeaways or a couple of takeaways that, to help people like summarize everything that we talked about today, what are some of the most important aspects you really want to get across to the listeners about learning how to change their mindset using this, this way of, of, of coping with life? Well, using, using and getting really good at active imagination will, is the, is the, is the gateway to the subconscious. Um, imagery opens, you know, it, it opens a, a pathway again to a shift in consciousness. Yeah. It's instantaneous. So working, working with those, but the first and most important one that supersedes all that is the willingness to take a good, authentic look to uncover your core essence, that yeah. part of us that lives beneath and before all the other stuff yes got put on top of that in our life yes and it's it's it can be scary work it's like what what if i don't like what i find or what right. you know i'm kind of comfortable now what if i don't want to there to be anything else you know there's all these things that come up yeah. so really really you know really one of the key things i do is work with that work with each person to find their true core essence. And that's what we develop. And, and again, no matter if you're a CEO of a $2 billion company or, you know, $30,000 company, or you have dreams of doing something, doesn't really matter. We are all humans and we right. all have these pieces and we all have an essence. Right. So how can I use that? How can I work with that? How can I expand on that so that, again, I can create the life that I really want to have? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Those would be the, probably more than three takeaways, but then whatever. However <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was great. I, I, I love your takeaways there. It's so true. It's, it's so true. Uh, 
So what type of services do you provide on your website? If people want to come and visit you at your website, what type of different sure. alchemy um, coaching and what other things? Right. So, so I, so on there basically is very vague. It says work with John. So it, yes, there's one-on-one -on -one coaching. I also do um, speaking engagements. So if you want me to talk to your group or or in whatever whatever environment you want, if you want me to talk about more the business side of things and my experiences using this as a CEO and as you know the sales leader and sales trainer and all those types of things and many hats I wore, or in the music industry or wine industry or audio industry or whatever it is, doesn't really matter. Uh, I can do that. Or if it's a personal growth, you know, mm -hmm. you're talking about healing and moving through life and getting a skill set for your relationship. Right. Your, and your relationships, you know, cover a lot of bases. Yeah. Because we're in relationship, hopefully, with lots of different things. Yes. Or how do I look over my kingdoms? Right. That I have? Uh, each of us has that sovereign piece in yeah. us. And each of us have multiple kingdoms. And so what choices do I need to do in order to make each one of those thrive? So I can do, uh, and I, I love doing public speaking and talking about those topics as well. Yeah. So to give real tangible giveaways on each one of those. Um, if you visit my website and you, and you select work with John, you'll see my email there and I'll do a complimentary 15, 20 minute, just chat with you and get to know you and you can see if this at all resonates with you or not. And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, then I'm not the right mentor for you. Right. And you we can just have a we can have a great conversation either way. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell everybody your website so they know where to go? Yeah, and I hope you post it because it is a mouthful. It's Alchemy Coaching Institute. Okay. Dot com. So alchemy coaching institute.com, one word. And please uh, read, feel free and read my blogs. There's a lot of fun in, uh, information on there as I get ideas. Like I did one around <clears throat> Christmas time. I did one for the new year and what the numbers mean and, and, and how that applies to life and all kinds of different, different things that, that as I see or, or I get those pieces then I put it up there as blog form. So hope you, hopefully you'll find some some gold in there, some nuggets. Mm -hmm. and, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'll put everything in your um, description. So we'll have your website. We'll have everything that, you know, people were your contact address. So anybody that wants to connect with John, you can just go into the description and you'll have all of John's information. This has been a great experience. I love having you on the show. I love learning about this mindset technique, um, alchemy. I, you know, I, 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 you know, I've heard of it, but I haven't, I haven't really stepped deep into it until now speaking with you. And I'd love to have you back on the show where we can talk more about it and really, you know, dive deep into different areas. And, sure. you know, that would be great. You know, I, I, this has been a really pleasurable experience and, you know, many people, I think, you know, because when people think about coaching or they think about, you know, getting help, you know, a lot of times they think of verbal one-on-one, -on -one, but they don't think about the visual aspect of how they could heal through imagery, whether it's in your mind, whether it's on a piece of paper, or whether it's a color they see, you know, these things can be so powerful and have such a powerful effect, just like you mentioned about meditation and different ways of visualizing things and, and paying attention to our surroundings and how that could actually affect our mind and help us retrain and reset our mind. So this has been our, an outstanding um podcast and i'm so glad that you took, took the time to come on our show and and share all this information with everybody well thank you stacy I'm, I'm really honored and and humbled that you invited me I, I as you can probably tell i have a lot of passion i love this work and there's nothing better than giving back and watching watching those that work with me thrive and really get a new perspective whether they're new parents or whether they're business leaders or who whatever whatever they're doing or in relationship, uh, it's it's a wonderful thing. That's where I'm at in my life at this point, and and nothing fills me more. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're very welcome, and you have a great day. All right, take care now. You too.